Welcome back everybody. This is uh, Ted's Garage and I'm working on this 29 Model A two-door. Just to kind of recap, since it's been a while since I did a, a video, this is um, was my dad's car. He bought it in 1955 and drove it for uh, seven years high school, college, and then the army. 1962, he tore it apart. Got the uh, engine rebabited, but never did anything. He got shipped out to Germany, and uh, so it sat, and we moved, and it was moved around in storage. So uh, just recently, he, he uh, gave me, he wasn't gonna get to it and get it put it back together. So he gave me the car and uh, asked me if I, thought I could put it back together. So now I'm trying to figure it out and put it back together. In the uh, previous video, I think it was uh, episode, uh, I don't know, around five, uh, I got it to where the engine will turn over. So it wasn't locked up, but it has sat for 60, since 1962. So that's uh, 61 years, 61 years. Um, so I wasn't really sure what the engine inside looked like in 1985, I got it running. Yeah, it was locked up and I had to pound the pistons loose and uh, we finally got the engine unlocked, ran it for about maybe 30 minutes or an hour, just around our field and up and down our street a little bit. And, uh, my dad came home and it was running. So we kind of surprised him and he got to run it, drive it again after it had sat for 25 years or something. So anyways, then it sat another 40 years and, uh, I didn't know what the condition of the engine was. So I didn't want to make it any worse like the Babbitts, if he's got it re-poured and the valves and what it all looked like. Well, I started kind of peeling the onion back to see what it looks like inside. And um, we live on the East Coast U.S. and moved from uh, New England down to Georgia in the uh, late 70s. And then since then, it's been in Georgia and not in climate controlled. So lots of humidity so when i got into the engine there was a lot of rust you know this one wasn't ever really ran and sat up like some barn finds it's coated with oil and gunk in there to protect it really well this one was cleaned when it was rebabited so it was like clean fresh metal that was never uh, coated with oil and uh so it didn't really have oil in there to protect it. So when I got in there, I looked at the uh, valves springs were pretty rusty, but they seem to be working okay. I haven't pulled them apart, test their spring pressure rate. But I'm, I'm gonna leave them alone. I tried to sand and wipe off as much of the rust as I could. Um, then I pulled the pan off drain the oil. Oil had little flakes in it. I'm kind of assuming that's the Babbitts that were just kind of the test run first hour you know, after a rebuild. You uh, you want to change the oil, you know, on any engine. You know, you run it for a certain amount of time and then you change the, the oil to get any impurities out. And this has no oil filter. So the only way to get rid of them is changing the oil. Well, when I change, when I drain that oil out, that's been sitting at least since '85 when I got it running. I'm not, I don't remember if there was oil in it from like 1962. So I'm not sure how old that oil was, but it had, it was like metal flake. <laughs> if you're doing paint, it was great, but in oil, you don't want to see little metal flake in there. So I'm not sure what the Babbitts look like, which on Model A's, instead of having bearings in there, they use this Babbitt material, which is like lead and tin, and it'll uh, 
they're able to pour it and make a poured bearings is basically what it is. But anyways, I think that's what the metal, the little flakes were. And not sure if that's common with a renew, uh, rebuild with new Babbitts. But anyways, drain that oil out, drop the pan. So I dropped the oil pan, started looking up inside the engine, cranking it over, watching camshaft. Some of the lobes in the camshaft are pretty rusty. And uh, I used like some emery cloth and actually a scouring sponge. I can use in the kitchen just to try to get you know one of those old ones from my from my wife and uh, got up in there and tried to scrub the uh, camshaft rods um, you know you can't see the actual the bearing the main bearings and the without taking it further apart um, it cranks over you know I can hand crank it and uh, it's not too tight and it's not locked up anymore but I'm not sure what the condition of the the inside of that is and uh, at this point I'm going to just start moving forward yeah I'd like to hear it run you know if it wears out these uh, babbits you know we'll just try to make it last as long as we can um, getting babbits report a couple thousand dollars it's like We'll just wait and see how long these last. But I tried to clean up that camshaft, and it's it's rough. There's three or four lobes, like the ones all the way to the the back of the engine. I guess for some reason that was more exposed to uh, humidity, or just didn't get a good coating of oil on it um, from you know when it was rebuilt. But that cam lobe just was very rough and pitted. So I tried to sand it out with uh, emery cloth and uh, get it as smooth as I could without, because if you, if you um, to, to pull the camshaft out, which I'm about to get to the timing gear attached to the camshaft, you have to get all the valves off the, the lifters because when you pull, you have to get the lifters out to pull the cam out. So, and which all of this is easier if it's on an engine stand and you can turn it upside down and drop them in. But, um, so needless to say, you know, the, the engine will last as long as it's going to last. And then we'll have to look at rebuilding, uh, doing a fresh rebuild. So I'm not even sure if that's the original cam from 1929. You know, my dad couldn't really remember what he had done when he had it rebuilt in 62. You know, he was uh, headed off in the Army, so he sent it to a machine machine shop, got it babbitted, and that's the part that he remembers. Not sure what they did to the engine. Um, but I, I'd really like to, really, really, <laughs> really would like to hear it run again. So my plan now is try to put it back together and quit taking stuff apart and look at it. it's like shh don't don't look at that don't look at the the rust on the cam don't look at the rust on the rods um yeah i cleaned it up the best i could up under there and just tried to oil it down um but what i found was timing gear on the front of the cam it's fiber it's a pressed fiber and it was shot this is what they look like. It's a, I don't know what kind of material that is, but that's that's what they used originally with Henry Ford, and uh, you know the it had several chunks of teeth coming off, and when I would crank it over, you know it it would transfer over to the other uh, the crankshaft gear that this meshes with, and these teeth were just coming apart, and you know that that wouldn't have lasted, you know minutes, hours, maybe days. So um, I had to order this new one, which came in and uh, not cheap. I think it was $70, $80 for a timing gear. 
people say, oh, install the aluminum one. Some people say, no, they're noisy, and this is what Henry Ford wanted, and all kinds of back and forth. But I just want to go back to the fiber one. Uh, you know, and, uh, if people want to use their aluminum ones, that's fine. This is going to be a stock engine. We're not going to put high compression head on it and, you know, try to get 100 horsepower out of it. It was 40 horsepower back in 29, and that's what it's going to be. So anyways, I guess I'm going to start with pulling the uh, timing cover off the front, and when, which is the... Uh, Let's see, right there. Um, and to do that, I read like Les Andrews and a few other things that uh, you have to support the engine because it's you have to take the front motor mounts on, off because they mount to the timing cover. And the other thing they say is to loosen the rear motor mounts because you're, you know, you're moving it. Um, so we'll see. Yeah, these are probably 1929 rear motor mounts. Um, they're at least 1962 motor mounts, and it's just a piece of, you know, flat rubber. And uh, even from 62, if they were new, I, I, I went ahead and ordered some new rear motor mounts. So we'll see how hard it is to get these old ones out. But I, I really want to get the old ones out and uh, go ahead and replace them since I'm, might as well, right there. And uh, this, each time I peel a layer off the onion, it, it's like, while I'm right there, might as well. It's like the camshaft. I'm right here. Might as well put a good one in. I don't know. You know, it's that <laughs> the budget and the time, you know, at some point you have to draw the line. You know, I, I can't spend $5,000 just on the engine and I have all the rest of this car to figure out and how to put, how it goes back together. You know, I didn't take it apart, so, and I'm pretty sure we don't have all the parts. You know, I, I'm like 100% positive we're, we're missing parts. I'm missing the, uh, the rear door panel, which mounts the uh, window lift on it. It's like, I have one side, but not the other. And some of this stuff is reproduced, but that isn't. I haven't found a, a, a place that reproduces those panels. Uh, especially for a two-door, 29 two-door. But it, if you know where you can get one of those rear panels for a 29 two-door, it's gonna, it's the flat panel that, uh, it's like a, a metal door panel, but it, it's for the, the rear seat. And that's where the, uh, I think I have the um, window crank, the, the window regulator that brings the window up and down, but I don't have the tin. And, uh, my buddy down in uh, Australia is a uh, Wayne's Garage. If you check out his uh, his YouTube channel, he is very good at working tin, but he would need a pattern, you know. So, you know, I, I could try to get him to do it. Then shipping from Australia wouldn't be cheap either. And uh, right now he's uh, he's about to have surgery, so. Uh, um, we're just praying for him and his surgery that he's has, has to get it approved and all that. So, but anyways, I need, I need somebody on this side of the, the world that, uh, does body panels and probably could make one. Otherwise I'm going to get a piece of, I don't even know what it is, 18 gauge, 16 gauge tin and, you know, bang something out myself with hammers and vice grips in a vice. Uh, yeah, he's got all the tools. He's got the bead rollers, and he does a really nice job on those Australian Holden cars. Yeah, although he does some nice panels. Um, but I'm not, you know, I'm not Dave Kendo with a million dollar shop and hundreds of guys working for me, and you know, subcontractors that ooh, I'll just order another hundred dollar part. Like, I'm trying to do this on a budget myself, and get it done but i need to to get get it running get it get parts going back on quit taking stuff off uh if you, if you look at some of the earlier videos you can really see 
the, the bottom of the doors and you have to put new door patch panels, weld that on the rear inner fender wells, um, rear, the rear quarters, um, more welding patch panels in there, which I found are hard to find for a 229 two door, the rear, rear quarter inners. Um, but anyways, I guess I'm going to get started trying to get this timing cover off the front and uh, front motor mount off first and then get the timing cover off and get the rear motor mounts off. So uh, that's where we're at. Keep watching. Okay, I thought I'd just bring you in here. Took a breaker bar on these and then uh, both of these got them loose. There's the, the center nut up under here. If you can see it right there, right, right there. Um, yeah, that's the bottom of the the yoke, and it's got a, a welded in bolt. You have to take the nut off, and then there, there's a rotten old bush washer and bushing there, and a little cotter pin that was all rusted to pieces. So got that and then took these loose for now jet put a little weight on the jack took the weight up and you know I could basically lift this off now I'm just waiting on these rear mounts and these were originals I'm pretty sure and uh, cotter pins broke right off so the castle nuts I was lucky that the cotter pins were rusted enough that I could just turn the, the castle nuts and get the uh, the nuts off and uh, I can't get these other bolts out Okay, I got the bolts off on both sides. The uh, I think it's a three-quarter nut and a three-quarter wrench size. And uh, came out actually fairly easy to unscrew them. Just getting a wrench in there was the hard part. And now the engines. It's just floating there now. I'm gonna pop it. Okay, I'm gonna switch back to uh, working on the timing cover on the front here and see if I can uh, make some progress. Uh, while I'm waiting on the black paint to dry on the motor mounts. I'm going to go ahead and try to uh, loosen up this front timing cover and uh, start taking the uh, cover off. Got the uh, front timing cover off. You see on the inside here, 
There's a little spring and this little pushing on the camshaft. 